Hello, and welcome to Ecology 222. My name is Tyler Power, and today I will be providing a video lecture on wildfires and biodiversity. Let's get started. So, what is a wildfire? Well, wildfires are important and naturally occurring disturbances for many of the plant's ecosystems. The evolution of plants and plant communities have, for over a millennia, been heavily influenced by the force of fire. In many cases, fire acts as a crucial part of a healthy and productive system. How do wildfires start? Wildfires have many causes that can be largely divided into two categories. The first is natural causes. There's only one primary cause of natural wildfires, and that is lightning. That being said, there are numerous factors which influence its ability to create large-scale fire. The second cause of wildfire is human actions. This cause can be broken up into three main categories. Prescribed burns as a forest management tool, land clearing for various uses, primarily for agricultural use or urban development, and general human carelessness. In this lecture, I will not focus on the causes of fire, but rather how fire affects biodiversity in two different groupings of ecosystems. The first is that is the ecosystems that are adapted to fire. These are ecosystems that have for millennia been influenced by fire and the fire has shaped its flora and fauna communities. These communities have evolved to form adaptations such as thick fire resistant bark and many others. One example of an adapted ecosystem is the Western North American conifer forests. Home to the lodgepole pine and Douglas fir, these ecosystems are heavily adapted to deal with consistent fire. They form special relationships that create a cycle of regeneration in the forest. Below you can see a cycle depicting the way the fire affects lodgepole pines. It starts with mature trees being burned in a fire, which causes their crowns to be destroyed, which opens up the canopy for sun to filter through to reach the seed saplings and seedlings that then in turn can regenerate and become the mature forest again. Some fauna have adapted for fire as well. Grass layer beetles in Australian grasslands and moose in the boreal forest have both shown that they can thrive in post-fire environments. Now onto the second grouping of ecosystems. These ecosystems are considered the unadapted and are largely made up of tropical rainforests, such as the Amazon rainforest, Sumatran rainforest, and the Congo River basin. Rainforests are some of the most species-rich and biologically diverse ecosystems in the world. Many species that live within these ecosystems are found nowhere else in the world. This makes them especially vulnerable to local extinction from fire. Historically, tropical rainforests have not been heavily affected by wildfires. They receive heavy amounts of precipitation, which means there is little dry fuel for which a fire can burn on. However, there has been a spike in wildfires in tropical regions over the last few decades. The greatest threats they face from wildfire is the shifting of their current plant communities from repeated fires. In some areas, like the Sumatran rainforest, species-rich plant communities have been replaced by pyrophytic grasses. This causes the displacement 
of large herbivores like the Sumatran rhino and Asian elephant. There are just a few final points and examples I'd like to make. We have all heard of the climate of climate change. Climate change and human activities have both played a role in multiplying the negative effects of wildfires, humans, through fragmentation of habitat and deforestation, and climate change through increased risk of drought and increasing global average temperatures. A clear example of how humans can increase the negative effects of fire can be seen in the case of the Port Macquarie koalas. The Port Macquarie koalas are a genetically diverse population and the area which they inhabit is prime breeding areas. However, it is a small area bordered by agriculture and fragmented from any other suitable habitats. So when it suffered from a wildfire earlier this year, the population was drastically reduced, leaving an already at-risk species in an even more vulnerable territory. To conclude, it seems that fires can both negatively and possibly affect biodiversity of ecosystems. When it occurs in areas where it has been for thousands of years, it can be incredibly beneficial. However, when it occurs in ecosystems which are not suited to recover, regenerate, or resist its effects, the consequences for biodiversity can be disastrous. Going forward, it will be important to be vigilant protectors of the ecosystems which have, which have so much of the world's diversity, biodiversity from the effects of ecosystem-destroying fires.